Hey guys, welcome back. Got a very nice guitar on the bench today. It's a Strat copy, as you can see from, well, the late 70s or early 80s. Probably looks a lot like an Ibanez, uh, but it's actually a Simar. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's C-I-M-A-R. And it was, like Ibanez, another brand of the Hoshino uh, musical instrument company in Nagano. I would assume this was made at the uh, Fujigen factory, uh, but let me know in the comments if I didn't get that quite right. I do really love Japanese made guitars, and pedals, amps and other musical gear, especially from the 70s and 80s. I think uh, their guitar manufacturers especially were really hitting their straps by that uh, era. And this guitar is a great example. Uh, even after 40 years, you know, the machine heads work really well. The fit and finish of the instrument is still uh, really great. So I think in those days they represent a great value for money. But there is one little problem that I've seen in a lot of these instruments out of Japan from this era, and that is they don't have hum cancelling sets of pickups. With a Strat, you've obviously got three single coils, typically, and when any of them are soloed, you're very likely to get a bit of a hum. But normally, when you switch to position two or position four and you have two pickups selected, then of course they should hum cancel with one another, if you know what I mean, and the hum should, should drop out or disappear altogether. Same thing should happen with Telecasters when the switch is in the middle, or with a Fender Jazz when you've got uh, both pickups turned up. I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about. This, I've got my amp cranked by the way, this is the neck pickup. Now this is the middle pickup. And of course when I switch both on with the switch in whatever that is, position four, well it actually hums a little more. In fact the hum is kind of louder and brighter when it really should be hum cancelling. So I'm going to get the strings off, we'll uh, flip the control plate and see what we can do. Well, these pots and this five-way switch has been replaced at some stage and yeah, I'm not sure about some of this soldering. I might have to revisit that. But uh, let's look at the pickups for the now. You can probably see that's showing south, that's showing south, and that's showing south. So all three magnets have the same magnetic polarity, so they're never going to hum cancel. I think I'm going to remove the middle pickup and we'll take it from there. So here's our middle pickup. Now, if these were Alnico magnets, I could simply remagnetize them with some nice strong uh, rare earth magnets and reverse their magnetic polarity that way. But with ceramic magnets, it doesn't really work so well in my experience. So the plan is to try and pry this off. Then I'll remagnetize the steel slugs underneath and then glue it on upside down. So I think I'll put a brand new blade in my knife and I'll put the glove on my left hand as well, I think. Hmm, it's being a bit difficult. I wonder if I gently warm it, that might help release the glue. So I'm going to remove the cover. I have to be careful here, I don't want to damage the coil or distort the bobbin or anything like that. I'll just warm it very gently and see if it helps. Actually, the glue feels a little softer, a little more gummy. Maybe if I put a series of these Stanley blades in and just work them in, it might eventually come away. Oh, that's good. That's feeling promising.
Uh, it's almost there. And there we go. Obviously, very high temperatures will destroy magnets, or at least demagnetize them. But that's really only, that's not even too hot to touch. That's really only being very gently warmed. I'm going to get some solvents and try to clean up this uh, gummy glue. All right, these two surfaces are nice and clean and ready for reuse. Now, even with the magnet removed, these are steel after all, and they do hold a little magnetism. And you should be able to see that they still deflect the compass for a south reading. So I'm going to put this in my remagnetizing jig, and I'll see if I can switch that around. So now with the bottom of the pickup, hopefully, there we go, we get a south reading. So I'm going to glue this up. Now I'm over at my vise because I've noticed that these pole pieces, or at least the bottom of these pole pieces, aren't perfectly in line only very slightly out but it would be great if they all made contact with the top of the magnet so I've got some veneer taped to one side and just a piece of masking tape on the other side and the plan is to glue this uh, like so and just apply some very light pressure Make sure that magnet's lined up. And if any of these pole pieces are slightly longer, that little piece of timber will just crush slightly. If you try this, do it at your own peril, I guess you'd say. Um, I've only got a small amount of pressure on that. So now I want to glue this magnet in place and I'm just going to run some super glue along here for the time being. All right, the simmer is all back together again. I did a bit of servicing work. She's had a setup and some new strings. I ended up filling the holes that the uh, pots go in in the pit guard. And that's because these uh, pots that someone else has put in, well, there was nothing wrong with them. There's no real reason to replace them, except that their bushings were much, much smaller than the originals and they were really loose fit. So um, I've already got a video on how to do that. So check it out. I also noticed that the tone pots weren't wired quite correctly. It was only a little thing, but I had to fix up that up as well so that they worked properly. I also went over some of the soldering and uh, reflowed a few of the joints. They looked a little bit dry and gray. The trick here really, and I guess the top tip, is that if you are gonna do the old school way of wiring where all of the pot casings are connected to earth, then you really should use a soldering station where you can uh, boost the temperature of the iron. I actually crank mine all the way up to 450 just so that there's enough heat for the flux to smoke off properly and so you get a nice shiny solder joint. And finally, I just had to be mindful when I was reinstalling this middle pickup that I swapped the hot and earth wires over. And that's because when you swap the magnet in a pickup, then the resulting signal is has its phase inverted. And so you have to swap the wires when you reinstall it. That way it's back in phase with the other pickups in the guitar. This workshop space of mine is really quite a noisy environment. There's uh, LED lighting everywhere and there's uh, electrical conduits running all through the walls and everything. Here's the bridge pickup. 
pretty noisy in here. And here's the middle pickup. Also pretty noisy, but when I put the switch in between, it's nice and quiet. And here's the neck pickup on its own. Again, quite noisy, but when I switch it together with the, the middle pickup, it's nice and quiet. So um, that's a win, I guess. So the, the guitar now functions just as a Strat should. And I think the owner of this will be happy. He does a lot of recording. And I think having two, uh, two positions on that switch that have hum cancelling will be a, a pretty useful mod for him. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the guitar. I think it plays really well, sounds really nice. And I've kept the original pickups in there, which I think for an instrument that's 40 years old is not really a bad thing after all. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Please, uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate that. So for now, I'm going to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.